on everybody it's your boy brother calvin here with frame to frame this is the premiere show uh frame to frame where i talk with some of the industry's greats in all types of fields predominantly in entertainment and so i am honored today to have uh one of the most amazing directors in hollywood here as my first celebrity guest not only in frame to frame but across any platform i've ever ever had so I want to give you a few notes about uh, this incredible um, gentleman, and then I'm going to bring him on because I see he's already ready. I don't know how much time he has, but we're going to jump right in. So, uh, this the the guest, the special guest I have today on Frame to Frame. Uh, his first indie film was titled One Week. Not only that, I'm just going to list some more of them. Batwoman. Y'all, y'all heard that one? Supergirl. FBI. Chicago Fire, Chicago BD, PD, <laughs> Chicago PD, Snowfall, The Shy, The Originals, Legacies, and much more. And one of my favorites, actually, uh, Bad Dad Rehab, which I actually just watched not too long ago. And I mean, and that's just the start. He also was nominated for the 2020 NAACP Image Awards under Outstanding Director in a Drama Series. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only e Come on, give it up for him, y'all. Give it up for him. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, up, sir. Man? How you doing, bro? I'm awesome. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. No complaints, bro. No complaints. Chilling. All right, all right. Well, thank you for joining me here on Frame to Frame, man. And so the purpose of my show is always to speak to... Um, basically that that young person that is a dreamer you know mm -hmm. that young person that has goals aspirations and maybe they don't know how to get to them maybe they're scared to take the first step so the purpose is just to, to share um our stories um so i want to with your permission i just want to start by just thanking you for um just availing yourself to me uh for those who don't know in my audience i'll share very quickly um I stumbled on Mr. Carl Seaton's page because of a picture. He doesn't know this, but it was a picture on someone's page, and it was a group of, like, all of the black directors. Um, it was him, Tyler Perry. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a bunch of other ones. So, of course, I hit the names, and I went into all of their DMs. So <laughs> I hit Mr. Uh, Seaton's DM with my, when my website launched and my um, acting reel launched. I launched those together. So I sent him my acting reel, asked him to critique it. He critiqued it. And not only that, but whenever I harass him in his DMs, he responds back. And so that means so much. And I don't think you'll, you'll understand how much that means. Not only did you respond once, but every time you respond. So I thank you, sir. Um, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. It really means a lot. So there, all of the dreamers out there, don't give up. Make sure you continue to network. Um, and it's going to definitely pay off because you see right here I have today, Mr. Carl Seaton. He thought enough of my platform and enough of me to invest his time. I thank you, sir. Oh, my pleasure, right. man. Now I got my thanks. You all start as dreamers, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So if you could um, tell us a little bit about how you got your start. Uh, I went to film school and, uh, mm -hmm. well, I got my start just loving film and loving movies and TV shows and and, uh, you know, just wanted to, I was moved by, you know, some earlier films back in the day. Do the Right Thing in particular is the one that really turned the corner for me to made me want to become a director. And I didn't really know yeah. the difference between a director and a producer, so I had to start educating myself. That's okay. why I decided to go to film school and, and learn the process of filmmaking. And, okay. you know, film school is a great starting point. I'm still learning. I'm still a student. You know, so you never stop learning. So film school was, a, was another push to get me going towards the goal of being a director telling stories and uh i mean i mean that was that was that was the biggest thing man just being influenced by iconic films like you know um do the right thing and uh -huh. you gotta have it uh boys in the hood minister society yes, sir. soldier stories a lot of these films that just left a strong impression made me say you know what? i want to tell stories like that and move people as well that's awesome man um uh, my questions are kind of scattered i'm just going to jump right in i've recently watched uh bad dad rehab and um, that was hilarious, and it was powerful and heavy at the same time. Um, 
Was that a challenge for you to combine the two and kind of weave that two? That was the point. I mean, if you look okay. at our first film one week, that was the same thing. It was some very heavy content mixed okay. with levity of comedy as well. And that's kind of one of my, my strengths as a storyteller. So the, and it, it allows you to invest and digest the story a lot easier as well. So, yeah. I mean, because if, if you just hit somebody over the head with weight, weight, and drama, 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 you can just wear on them. But when you give them these moments to breathe and, and lighten up, it can, they can go through the story of the journey a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, do you prefer directing films or TV shows, and why? Uh, it depends on the situation, man. I mean, certain certain, certain films are great. Here's the thing. I come from very low-budget film. Okay. Very, very low-budget films. And the TV shows I work on, these budgets are in the millions. So, it's mm -hmm. a whole different experience where you have an idea, and you throw it out there, and next thing you know, the idea is happening. Okay. And with ultra low budget films, you have an idea, but you got to modify it just based on the resources you have access to. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I, I love telling stories. I definitely want to get back into doing films as well. I'm not just going to stay on television. I want to do both. Okay. But I'm loving TV because the love, the type of storytelling I'm telling, and the levels of, of game and insight and knowledge I'm I'm getting and growing as a director are strengthening mm -hmm. that. So that when I do go back to a feature film, I'll be more than uh, prepared to just take it to the next level. So it's it's, it's, okay. it's all about man. Answer your question. Like I said, if the budget's right, and okay. uh, you know, it, it's, it takes various it's various elements that are required for it to be a you know a pleasant experience. That's budget, script, the team around, the producers, everything like that. So you know, but okay. both ways are highly enjoyable, man. I mean, it's very rewarding, you know, to work with some, you know qualified and talented actors and 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 cameramen and crew and things of that nature mm -hmm. to really tell some great stories and to to make episodes of TV that affect people because people reach out to me sometimes to you know tell me about how something i did moved them which which means a lot okay can you um take us back to that time when you knew what what you're calling your purpose was how did you how did you figure that out that directing was the lane that you should definitely pursue go to school for and then transition to a career okay so after i saw do the right thing i came out of the theater that day like okay this is what i want to do for the rest of my life Wow. I, I didn't know the difference between a producer and a director. So right. the first thing I did was say, okay, let me look up everything I can about this guy, Spike Lee. And okay. this was before the internet. This was before Google. Of course. You had, you had to do some research. You had to go to the yeah. library. library. You, had to look up <laughs> you, had to, you had to put some effort forth to get information. So, yeah. And I found, I went to the bookstore because I, I grew up reading constantly. I was at the bookstore, found out he makes books. After every film he did, his first five films, after every one, He'd make a book about the making of. Oh, so I went uh, back and got. He's got to have it and uplift the race of school days and do the right thing for do the right thing. And okay. he kept doing too for Jungle Fever, Five for Five, and he did one for More Better Blues. He did one for mm -hmm. X. Uh, so, uh, so, and, and in these books, he chronicles his make his, the making of the film and his process, okay. and he demystifies the process, which was like you know uh, amazing to me because I'm being told I'm, I'm being shown like this is how it gets this is how it can it gets done. And it can be done. It makes it doable. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, but it makes it doable. I'm like, and it's a black man explaining these things to me. So I'm like, wow, this right. is actually pretty cool. So I started to invest in that 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 aspect, and and you know, just like I said, ed educating myself in the process. The more I learned and reading in his books is what, what made me say, okay, I want to be a director. That's what I want to do. I want to be a director. I never had a desire to act or anything like that. But I said, directing is the thing I, I would I would subscribe to more so than anything else. So. Okay. That's what that's what got me going. Okay. Awesome. Would you ever do a, a TV series or a movie about your life? And if so, who would play you? <laughs> I would not do a movie or TV series. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 no, man. Nah. Shout out to um to, to Tina Marie. I'm trying to go. I want to go back and mess up my video. Tina Marie, I think it's 1913 on here. She asked the same question that I got coming up next. What is your ultimate goal or ultimate purpose in your career? What are you trying to reach when you can sit back and say, not that you're, you know, that you're done, you can, you can stop, but like the ultimate. Well, I got multiple ultimate goals, man. Okay. So one of my first ultimate goals is to tell complex stories that reveal our humanity and dimensionality as people of color, specifically okay. black men. You know what I'm saying? Because when you, when you can print, when you put out stories, to give someone that don't know anything about you insight and perspective that allows them to see a new a, a new side 
and and from a new angle that elevates the humanity. So that, that's number one. Number two, get to a situation where I can hire people. You know what I'm saying? So I can yeah. create jobs, job creation. That's another thing. I love to. I mean, I, I think how you inspire and you know, and, and and how some people will uplift and give people opportunities to go on and and, and flourish. That's I want to do that as well. That that has a lot of appeal to me as well. Just creating situations for myself where I can give somebody an opportunity. Now, with, now what they do with the opportunity is going to be on them. But I want okay. to try and create situations where here is your opportunity, here 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 is your chance, and here's your shot to take yourself to the next level, like I was given. Come on, <laughs> yeah. that's powerful, man. And you know, it's powerful for um, young people to see um, men that look like them. And people that look like them tell their stories. And um, so that's another reason why this this show and the other shows are so important. And these outlets are so important. Um, and, th- you know, what's interesting is that during this quarantine, for some reason, my access to celebrities and or people who inspire me the most that are on the level I'm trying to get to has opened so much. I don't know what it is. I know, I know that it's God, but also... <laughs> During this season, it's amazing. Like, my lineup for the rest of this season is ridiculous. And um, it's a blessing, man, because we get to vibe with people like you and get to hear your heart, get to hear the do's and don'ts. And um, you guys invest your time in us. So, um... Hey, well, let me say this, man. I, I am not a celebrity. <laughs> by, any, <laughs> by any measure, I am not a celebrity. I am I'm a director. I'm behind the scenes. I prefer to stay behind the scenes. And, you know... You can know my name, but mm. look at my work. That's what I. That's what I like to promote and push out. I don't really need the notoriety, the mm. fame, or anything like that. I'm more about the, you know, just look at the work. It's all about the work. That's awesome, man. Thank you for your humility. So here's an interesting question: um, If you weren't directing right now, what do you think you would be doing it for as a career? Man, I, oof. as a career. Mm-hmm. What, you didn't I, see no other option. I'd be walking I'm earth. Not, yeah, I'd be, I'd be walking okay. earth, man. Because uh, I made a pledge with my brother back in the day when we were first starting out with this, that, you know, we either going to do this or we're going to walk the earth. This is it. You know what I'm saying? There was no plan B. There was no fail safe. I you love just, it. You know, you just just go and figure it out. It's been a long road with a lot of highs and a whole lot of lows. Okay. At the end of the day, the, the purpose and the intention was always to do tell stories for a living. Okay. And we're both doing that. Yes, sir. Yeah. I always like to ask my guests if they care to share, if there's ever been like an embarrassing or goofy moment that happened to you that you didn't expect expect on set. Embarrassing or goofy moment that happened to me or that I witnessed? It could be either one. If it didn't happen to you, one that you were, you know, witnessed. Uh, I, can't, I can't think. Uh, embarrassing or goofy moment? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Uh, okay. Okay. I can't think of anything. Where I'm, I, I mean, because if 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 something happens, you you gotta own it. You own it. Right. You, you just keep rolling. Let's keep right. going. Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah. You keep going. Yeah. I can't think of anything where I was like embarrassed. I've seen some things happen on uh-huh. set. Like a, a, I've seen a mutiny on set, and that was embarrassing. But that wasn't for me. Oh, I was wow. witnessing this mutiny. Yeah. So I mean, but that's the case when someone do- isn't socially aware of how they're treating and interacting with other people. Yeah. And this this person, this this director, was really you know, focus on what they were doing and started, you know, alienating themselves from the crew and the mm-hmm. cast. So when the mutiny happened, they didn't see it coming. They were blindsided because they weren't paying attention. So it, mm-hmm. that was that was embarrassing. And that was hard for him to recover because, I mean, once the crew or cast mutinies on you, it's kind of hard to win them back. That's a whole different thing. So when right, that was a, but I took the lesson from that, which is okay. to stay humble and be grateful for those that are working around you and, and acknowledge their effort and expertise that they bring to the table. Thank you. For those that are just tuning in, you're tuning in to uh, Frame to Frame here with Carl Seaton, director and um, 2020 nominee for the NAACP Image Award for um, Best Director in the Drama Series. Uh, for It was for Snowfall, correct? Yes, for Snowfall. Snowfall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, um, is it harder for you... I'm sorry, what you say now? Oh, that, oh that's, that's, that's good. What's up, Rick? Okay. Um, is it harder for you to direct when you're just brought in for one episode, or do you prefer, and is it easier to do a block of episodes? 
I mean, they, they both require the same amount of effort, same amount okay. of focus, same amount of craftsmanship. So it's not like okay. one is easier than the other. I mean, the thing about it is you don't take any days off. You don't take any episodes off. You don't take anything lightly. You don't just mail it in and you just throw it like, well, it's going to be what it's going to be. You always try your best to make it the best episodes you possibly can. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the audition process for actors out there like myself who are dying to hear from a director. Uh, what do you look for in an actor ultimately in, inside of the audition process? And then we can talk a little later about what you look for once you got them on set as well. Uh, well, the biggest thing you look for is authenticity. Meaning okay. you, you want to believe what they're experiencing in that moment at that moment. Mm -hmm. So, and that could be a lot of different things, but a very natural way of expressing yourself and having your wits about it as well. And like I said, when I say being in that moment, you're applying your wits and your ins and, and your experiences to that moment so that I can watch it, knowing you're reading a paper, but I'm believing you're in that moment. Right. That's probably the, that's probably the biggest thing. And then also being able to be flexible. You know what I'm saying? You, if you can, okay. if you don't deliver it one way, that's limiting to us because you want to get it, you want to have multiple options. And, and sometimes... You can deliver, you can.